moving on with section 9.2. This is about uh, understanding and using the Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem, Pythagorean theorem, that's the way we say it really quickly, kind of phonetically pronounce it Pythagorean. Um, so we're going to be using this in two dimensions and in three dimensions. In eighth grade, you practiced this in two dimensions and also came up with uh, something that we're going to review in the next section, the distance formula. But for right now, we're going to review some uh, squares and square roots and things like that, and then use the Pythagorean theorem in a couple different settings. So in the warm-up, we've got 9 squared. So of course, that means 9 times 9. We use 9 twice, so that's going to be 81. And then we've got 12 squared. I'm hoping these are things that you've got memorized. So we get 144 here. And then if we take a look at this one here, this says the square root of 6 squared. Now that looks really horrible until you remember that if we square a square root, these two things undo each other. So squaring undoes taking a square root. So if these two things cancel each other out, the only thing we're left with is a 6 right here. And again, the reason for that is this would be the square root of 6 times the square root of 6. That would be the square root of 6 times 6. And remember, when we simplify a square root, we're looking for pairs of factors. So there's a 6 on the outside, technically a 1 stuck underneath that. Um, but uh, the square root of 1 is just 1, so we end up with just a plain old 6. So that's why the answer works out the way that it does. And then on this next one, we've got 2 square root of 13, and we're squaring that. This one you need to be a little bit more careful with. We're going to square the 2, and we're going to square the square root of 13. So squaring 2, we get 4, and squaring the square root of 13, you get 13. So when you multiply the two of those together, 4 times 13 is 52. So there's the answer on that one. And then we've just got the square root of 54. Well, what we want here is we want to simplify that. That means we're going to have to factor that. So think of prime factors, or you can think of things that are squared uh, that go into that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and break that down. 6 goes in here 9 times, and 9 is a 3 and a 3. So this would be the square root of 3 times 3 times 6. We could break down the 6. That would be a 3 and a 2, but then there's no pairs there. So this ends up being 3 radical 6 once that's simplified. And then what's the Pythagorean theorem? Most everybody remembers what this is. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So most people remember what it is, but they, they do have a hard time remembering, well, what type of triangle does it work on, and what do each one of those represent? So it says, what do the letters stand for? Well, remember, A and B, those are legs. So if we do a right triangle over here, because that's what it works on, it works on a right triangle. If we do a right triangle over here, this is the hypotenuse, and this is a leg, and this is also a leg. So we've got a leg here and a leg here. It doesn't matter which is which. They both have the same name. The only thing special about this is the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. So what this means is we've got a leg squared plus a leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And I actually like memorizing it that way because then you remember what parts of the triangle you're dealing with. So a squared plus b squared uh, equals c squared works on a right triangle. And what it means is take a leg and square it, add it to the other leg when you square it, and it equals the hypotenuse squared. So leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So let's take a look at the uh, section here. Um, there are lots of common mistakes that people make when they're using the Pythagorean theorem. Here are the two most common. They put sides in the wrong place, so they forget that we're talking about a leg squared plus a leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. You've got to make sure that you get the legs in the right place and the hypotenuse in the right place. And then the other thing would be assuming that just because there's the numbers look really ugly, that the problem's going to be really difficult. It usually doesn't turn out that way. So we're going to take a look at this problem right here. Again, one of the common things that people would do is they'd just say, oh, I'm going to take 7 squared and add it to 3 squared and set it equal to this one right here. But remember, this is a leg, and what we're missing is a leg. So I'm going to go ahead and use the letter B to represent that, because we usually use A and B to represent the legs and C to represent the hypotenuse. So I'm going to think of this as leg squared plus leg squared equals equals hypotenuse squared. So this is going to be 9 plus b squared equals 49. So we'll subtract the 9 from both sides. So we end up with b squared equals 40. And then in order to undo the squaring, we take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to take the square root there. So the answer on this one is going to be the square root of 40, but we want to simplify that. So the square root of 40, let's see, that would be 4 and 10. This is 2 and 5, and this is 2 and 2. So we have a pair of 2's, so we're going to write a 2 on the outside, and then a 2 and a 5 are stuck on the inside, so we're just going to write it like that. So the answer on this one, the missing leg here, is 2 radical 10. 
Um, on this one, again, notice we've got a right angle right here. What we're missing is the hypotenuse. These look really awful, but take a look at what happens here. This is the square root of 6, so we're going to do leg squared plus the other leg squared. So that will equal the hypotenuse squared, which they're using x to represent that. So this is going to be a square root of 6 squared. These undo each other, so that's going to be a 6. Square root of 15 squared, again, those undo each other, so we get a 15. And that equals x squared, so this is 21 equals x squared. And then to get rid of the squaring, we're going to take the square root. So x on this one is the square root of 21. And you might think, well, gosh, can't we simplify that? Well, remember, we'd have to have a pair of factors, and this would simplify to a 3 and a 7, or it would factor to a 3 and a 7. So we don't have any pairs of factors, so we're done right there. Now, there may be problems where we change these to decimals, but for right now, we're going to leave them like this. Um, on a problem like this where we, where we aren't given a diagram, we need to uh, kind of know what these represent. Remember, B and A, those are going to represent legs, and C is usually reserved for the hypotenuse. So what we're missing here is we're missing A. So I'm going to do A squared plus B squared, so leg squared plus leg squared, so this is going to be 5 squared equals hypotenuse squared, so that's going to be the square root of 26 squared. And again, looks really awful, but take a look how cool this is. 5 squared is 25. The square root of 26 squared is just 26. We just get the radicand underneath there. And then if we solve for a, we get uh, a squared equals 1. Take the square root, so we get a is equal to 1. So of the three, this is actually the nicest one on here. So we'll come down here and we'll take a look at this next one. So on these next problems here, what we're going to use is we're going to use something called the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Now converse means we're going to do this in the opposite order. So if you've got a right triangle, we can take leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. The converse is the opposite of that. We switch those two statements. So if leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, then we've got a right triangle. So what we want to do is be able to tell if these sides would make a right triangle. So remember, the hypotenuse is always going to be the longest one. So let's take a look at this. The 15 right there, that is the longest one. So there's our, our potential hypotenuse. OK, so we'll put a question mark on that one. So we're going to do 9 squared plus 12 squared. And the question here is, does that equal 15 squared? So this is uh, 9 squared is 81. 12 squared is 144. We did those up above. And then 15 squared, hopefully you remember what that one is. That's 225. Well, if you add 81 to 144, you end up with 225. So because those two things are, are equal to each other, the leg squared plus the leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared, we're going to write yes, that it is a right triangle. Okay. Now, on this one, it might be a little bit hard to tell um, which one's the biggest one. So we've got 4 and we've got 7. And I'm not really sure which is bigger out of uh, 2 radical 13 or 7. But let's just take each one of these and let's square them. Let's do 7 squared. Let's do 4 squared. And let's do 2 radical 13 squared. And again, we talked about this up above. 7 squared would be 49. 4, four squared would be 16. And then when we square the 2 radical 13, we square the 2, we get a 4. And we square the 13, square to 13, we get 13. So this is 52. So um, of these, this one is just a little bit bigger than this one. So that one right there could be the hypotenuse. But remember, what the converse says is if you add the two legs together, they've got to equal this one. And because 49 plus 16 does not equal 52, we're just going to say not a right triangle. And that would be the answer there. And there's our work that shows that. Now, there's an asterisk by this one right here, and there's a good reason for it. We could go through and say, hey, this, these two are the short ones, so they've got to be the legs. So I could do 5 squared plus 4 squared, and we'd check to see whether or not it equals 10 squared. Uh, you can do that really quickly. Um, it won't. But the more important thing is here is remember, um, you've got to have the sides that make a triangle in the first place before you can make a right triangle. And the way we check that is the two short legs have to add up to be longer than the long leg. So these are the two short ones. So if I do 5 plus 4 and compare that to 10, um, they're not bigger than that. So there's no triangle here at all. So not even a triangle, period let alone a right triangle. So keep that in mind. Now, we could have gone through and done 25 plus 16, and we could have said, well, that doesn't equal 100, so there's no way that works out. But these don't even make a triangle on this one. So don't forget, that's called the triangle inequality. The two short legs have to add up to be longer than the long leg in order to form a triangle. And just really quickly, just for the heck of it, if this is 10 and this is 5 and this is 4, what would happen is if we try and try and sw try to swing those together, 
Um, this would be five and this would be four. We've got a little gap here. They don't even come together and touch. So we kind of think of these as like hinges right there. So just a little uh, repeat of what you would have learned last year. So let's take a look at the bottom of this page right here. We've got some of these problems and they're, they're written in three dimensions. So it says find the indicated length. So we've got this three-dimensional box right here, and we've got this square-based pyramid right here, and it says find the length of EC. Well, EC is the distance from here over to right here. So this is what we want. We want that diagonal right there. Now, in order to find that, we've got to be a little bit tricky about this. So this right here would be a leg using that diagonal as a hypotenuse, but the other leg would need to be this right here. And that leg right there is actually the hypotenuse on this, uh, this triangle that's in the base right there. So I'm going to draw this one off to the side here. So it looks like this. This is 4, and this is 9. And what we're trying to find out here is what is this. So I'm going to use an x to represent that. So let's go ahead and solve that. Um, let's see. Again, we'd have leg squared plus leg squared. So that's going to be 9 squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this is going to be 16 plus 81 equals x squared. So we put those together, we get 97 equals x squared, and then we take the square root. Now, x over here is equal to the square root of 97. I'll go ahead and write it like that, and I'm going to put a dotted circle around it. So I'm going to go ahead and erase this, and that is the square root of 97. Now, don't bother simplifying it, because we're going to end up squaring this anyway, and remember how easy it is to just square a square root. What we're missing here is we're missing how tall this is. So let's see if we can look at the diagram and figure out how tall it is, because then we'd be able to figure out uh, the distance from E to C. Well, if this is 4 and this is a box, this side right here would be 4, this side back here would be 4, and this one over here would be 4. So I'm going to mark that as 4. So I'm going to draw this triangle out on the side here, and this is what we're looking for. So I'm going to use D for diagonal, so that's a D. And this is 4, and this is the square root of 97. So take a good look at what happens here. Um, we get leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this is going to be 16. And then this is going to be, let's see, if you square square root of 97, you get 97. And that equals d squared. So if you put the two of those together, we get uh, 113. So 113 equals d squared, so we're going to take the square root. So we end up with d is equal to the square root of 113. Um, that does not simplify at all, so I'm going to go ahead and circle that. But because this is a story problem, we're going to put centimeters on the end there. And then we're also going to grab the calculator, and we're going to figure out what the square root of 113 is. So uh, let's see, square root. So we got this one on. We'll hit the square root, so second x squared. And then we're going to do 113 here. Hop out on the end, make sure that it looks right. So we're going to round this to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to say this is 10.63. So 10.63 centimeters, OK? So either way there would be fine. Kind of nice to have it uh, in that non-simplified uh, version uh, with the radical there. So let's go ahead and take a look at this next one. Um, we want to find EO. So that's the distance from the very point down to the center of the bottom. And then for this, we're going to need to think kind of hard on, on uh, this one. We've got a square base. And in order to find this right here, we would have to figure out what this is and what this is right here. Um, and we can figure out a couple of those, but we've got to be, well, gosh, how would we figure out what this is and what that is? Well, this bottom part, stop and think about this. This is the center of a square. So if we were to come over here, this would be 3 and this would be 3. So that one right there is 3. So we're in good shape there. Now, how do we figure out what this uh, side is right here? So I'm going to draw this down here. This is what I've got so far. We're trying to figure out this. I'm going to use an H for that. Um, we've got 3 right here, and we don't know what this is. So I'm going to use an X for that. So we'll label that as X. But if we take a look at this face over here, let me draw what that would look like. Um, this would be 6, and this would be 8. And then what we want is this right here. That would be our X value. Um, now, if this is a square and we come straight down the side, again, this is going to be 3, and this is going to be 3. So here's what we're looking for. We're looking for how long is this piece right here, okay, when this is 3 and when this is 8. And again, we're going to use leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this is going to be x squared plus 3 squared equals 8 squared. So this is going to be x squared plus 9 equals 64. 
So this is going to be x squared equals, if we subtract the 9 from both sides, we end up with a 55. So then we get x equals, once we take the square root, we get x equals the square root of 55. So I'm going to go ahead and take this over here, and we're going to say that this now is square root of 55, square root of 55. And then we're going to figure out that one. So this is going to be h squared plus 3 squared equals square root of 55 squared. Now let's just uh, pause for just a second and make sure that we've got this right. This is a right angle right here. So we've got three and what we were missing is the height. And when we found this X right here, that was this hypotenuse on this triangle right here. So we do have a leg squared plus a leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. We have set this up the right way. So let's go ahead and do H squared plus nine is equal to, this would be 55 once those undo each other. So we're gonna subtract uh, nine from both sides. So we end up with h squared equals, this would be 46. So we've got a 46 right here. And then you take the square root of both sides. So h is equal to the square root of 46. And this is interesting because 46 is just a two and a 23, and 23 is prime. So this is the answer right here. And then we'll go ahead and figure out what this is as a decimal. So let's do the square root of 46. Hop on the other side there um, and hit enter and we get uh, rounded to the nearest hundredth, 6.78. So 6.78. And again, this is in centimeters, so I'll put centimeters on there. All right, and there are the two uh, acceptable answers on that problem. All right, let's take a look at the other side. Now on this other side, we don't have any diagrams. All we're given is just a story problem here. So it says use the Pythagorean theorem in context of the situation to answer the questions. And it says at the top of the page, what should we do first since each one of the following involve a geometric shape? So they're all gonna involve a triangle or a rectangle or something like that, and we're gonna be finding diagonals. So we're gonna be drawing a picture. It's always a good idea to draw a picture when you're dealing with some shape, some geometric shape. So here's the deal. Camden places a ladder against a tree, and the base of the ladder is seven feet from the tree, and the ladder is 12 feet long. How high above the ground does the ladder touch the tree? So we'll assume that that tree go, grows straight out of the ground, although, yeah, we got a little uh, bump on the tree there. And then the, the ladder leans right up against this, so we're gonna have a right angle right there. And it says the base of the ladder, so that means the bottom of the ladder is seven feet out from the tree and the ladder is 12 feet right here. So what we're looking for here is a height, how high up the tree. So again, leg and leg right here, the ladder represents the hypotenuse in this case. So we're gonna do leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So we're gonna have h squared plus 49 is equal to 144. So we're gonna subtract 49 from both sides and we get h squared equals, let's see, 144 minus 49 would be uh, 95, and then we'll take the square root. So h in this case is equal to the square root of 95. That would be in feet, and this is a five and a 19. So that doesn't simplify at all, but again, this is a story problem, so it's probably better to write this in something that uh, people would understand. So since the original measurements were given in feet, let's go ahead and answer this in feet. So we're gonna do the square root of 95, hit enter, and we get nine point, let's see, round that to the nearest hundredth. So tenths, hundredths, it's either gonna be a 74 or a 75, that six is enough to bump it up. So 9.75, and this would be feet, okay? So we'll circle it like that. This one's probably the best way to answer that question. All right, um, and just, just for uh, argument's sake here, if we come back and take a look at this, um, we were expecting the hypotenuse to be the longest, so we're expecting this one to be a little bit shorter. And where this is only seven feet out, that's a pretty steep angle. We'd probably expect this one to be a little bit bigger than seven. Um, so that looks like a pretty reasonable answer there. Okay, let's take a look at the next one. A uh, common issue here, it says a TV is listed at being at 50 inches. Now when they talk about TVs, TVs are listed by their diagonal measurement. So if we're looking at a TV, the TV would actually be measured along the diagonal. So on this one, this is 50 inches. And it says, um, if the screen measures 30 inches in height, what is the actual width of the screen to the nearest inch? So to the nearest inch. So they're telling us that we need to round this a little bit differently. So it's 30 inches high, and what we're missing is this right here. So again, we're gonna do leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this is gonna be x squared plus 30 squared equals 
50 squared. There's a leg, there's a leg, and there's the hypotenuse. So this is going to be x squared. Try not to reach for a calculator too quickly. If you square 3, you get 9. And if you square 10, you get 2 zeros. So this is actually 900. Same type of thing here happens. We get a 25 and then two zeros on it. So x squared plus 900 equals 2,500. So I'm hoping we can do this without reaching for a calculator. But if you need to, that would be totally OK. Um, we'd have 25 minus 9. That's going to be 16. We just add the zeros there. And then we need to take the square root. Now, I will fully admit that that looks a little bit intimidating until you think of it this way. This would be 16 times 100. So that's a pair of 4s, and that's a pair of uh, one, a pair of 10s, pair of 4s and pair of 10s. So this ends up being 40. Now, if you want to double check on the calculator, let's go ahead and type that in. Square root of 1,600. Hop out on the end, hit enter, so we get 40. So this is going to be 40 inches. And we didn't have to round at all, um, so we're in good shape there. All right, now this last one, it says John has a wooden box that measures 4 feet by 3 feet by 2 feet. And it says, what's the length of the diagonal of the box? So again, that's the distance from one corner of the box to the opposite corner. So it's going to be on the opposite face on the opposite side. So let's draw, let's draw what this might look like. So drawing a box, a three-dimensional box, isn't too bad. So we're going to make it look like this. Okay, so I'm going to draw a rectangle like that. And then I'm just going to draw off to the side here. I'm going to draw three lines that are angled about exactly the same. And then I want them all to be parallel. So it'll look something like this. And then the back side, we can just draw these other parallel lines, and then we're all set. So it says this is 4 by 3 by 2. And we want this. We want to know what is the distance from here back to here, OK? So from this top back corner to this front bottom corner. So this is very similar to the one that we did on the, on the front side. So here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to find, and I'm going to change colors for this. We're going to have to find this right here. So looking at the bottom, um, we've got this. We've got 4 and 3, and then we've got a right angle right there. We're trying to find this. So I'm going to use that as x. And then uh, let's go ahead, and find, go ahead and find that. So we've got leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. 16 plus 9 equals x squared. So that's 25 equals x squared. Take the square root, so we get x is equal to 5. So this right here is equal to 5. So I'm going to put a 5 right there. And then let's draw this triangle that we've got out here. So I'll change colors for this one. We've got a right triangle there. And this is the triangle that we're after. OK? And we want to know what that is right there. So I'm going to call that the hypotenuse or the distance. You could use whatever variable you want. So let me draw that off to the side here. So this is the triangle. We've got a right triangle there. This is 2. This is 5. And we want to know what that is. So again, we need leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So this is going to be 25 plus 4 equals h squared. So this is going to be 29 equals h squared. Now, if you have any trouble with that, again, what I did here is I just did 5 squared plus 2 squared. 2 squared is 4. 5 squared is 25. I get this. Then we're going to take the square root. So we're going to say h is equal to the square root of 29. 29 is a prime number, so we're not going to be able to simplify that at all. And it's a story problem, so we have probably ought to answer uh, to the nearest hundredth of a foot. Um, so let's go ahead and throw that in the calculator. And we're going to get the square root of 29. Hop out on the end, hit Enter. So this is going to be 5.38. And then there's a 5. So it's either going to be 38 or 39. That 5 is enough to bump it up. So we're going to have 5.39. And this is measured in feet. So this right here would be the answer. All right, uh, some two-dimensional and three-dimensional Pythagorean application problems there. Go ahead and do the self-assessment and get started on the assignment.